T and uh, Chung. We're, we're actually, you know, very close friend of Kenny, and um, I've actually been speaking a lot of meetups and podcasts, and I think Kenny thought there's some value that I could bring to his team, and I think it's really important that you in real estate understand um, this kind of side of the business, because I think for my agent and for my team, it has been enabling us to build to provide more solutions to our real estate investors, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, if anyone's like working with investors, and you know, buying, selling real estate to real estate investors right now, the return of a rental right now is like, make no sense to buy in California because the cap rate is so low. The average cap rate in Oakland, I think, is like three and a half percent. So, um, you know, that's, that's really low, right? And then how do we maximize our rental property? And that's how uh, our company is started. Uh, the name of the company is Go Property Hub. And uh, we started this company over a year ago, okay? Uh, my background, my partner, Chung, we've actually been in real estate combined over 30 years experience. Um, our background is in real estate investment, uh, real estate flipping development. So we actually buy houses, fix it up, put it back in the market for a margin. And, um, and we've been doing that very successfully. We're one of the bigger scenes in the Bay Area. We actually have quite a few properties over the years. But should I know what I know today, I would have keep a lot on my property and actually perform all my assets because I can maximize it, service my debt, and then retain it all my assets. And that's really the, um, the, the solution that we came up with and why we found this company because we're like, okay, um, you know, it's not how much you buy, it's how much you can hold. And if you hold it, how much you can make out of it because if you don't want to make it too little, then you're losing out on opportunity costs. With a safe amount of money in town, you can actually invest in another state and make a lot, whole lot more money. So we found this company because we started utilizing some of our investments, some of our flip property, we turned into short-term rental. So coming from Silicon Valley, there's a huge need of short-term rental. Why? Because job growth, everyone's <coughs> growing. San Jose probably is one of the most cities to live in right now. I and mean, you probably see that in the national report. Uh, one bedroom apartment, uh, one bedroom, one bath, is an average going rate of $2,600 a month. And it's going higher and higher. Um, but, uh, so people are looking at short-term solutions some of the major sectors are now looking at short-term solutions to you know, provide uh, housing to their workers and things like that. So again, uh, Go Coffee Help is our company name, and today we're gonna to talk about how do we maximize passive income through short-term rental and Airbnb. Um, if you have Instagram, and I trust you all of you because you're here, uh, you found us on social media, some, some certain platform, the best way to learn about what we do and um, how do we do it, we share a lot of tips, a lot of you know, trick and secrets, we do a lot of videos, actually us standing on property, we talk about things to do, things not to do. When it comes to Airbnb, you can follow us on at Go Property Help. If you want to connect with me personally, um, my handle is down below, Silicon Valley Realtor. I post a lot about my kids, guys, if you hate those, you can just skip, 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 and get to the, the green, green one. I, I talk about everything. You get a little about, get to know me a little bit personally when you follow me personally on Instagram. Um, Our mission, um, our company, uh, again, coming from the background of real estate investment and real estate uh, flipping for the past five years, you know, we came up with a vision and a mission that we believe our investor can benefit from. And if, if we, our passion is to utilize the latest technology combined with our extensive real estate experience and enable us to effectively maximize your rental profit and present your guests with a pleasant stay or experience. Who here has no idea what short-term rental is? So you have no idea what it is? You? Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> so in a nutshell, real brief, a lot of you already know what short-term rental is all about, but the comparison between long-term and short-term, and I think if you're in real estate and you're working with real estate investor, I think you gotta able, be able to break down the differences in short-term and uh, long-term rental, right? Not all property fits in a short-term rental kind of platform, okay? Especially here in Oakland, uh, a lot of restrictions and uh, you know, a lot of guidelines and local ordinance are actually uh, enforcing short-term rentals, so not all of them. So down the slide, I'm gonna be sharing some, um, some numbers, some statistics that are actually found by uh, a data analytic company that just did a presentation with us last week. Um, so we're gonna share some of the data, allow you guys to, when you hear, you get some of the insights, good data, because these data are not available online. 
Uh, if they do, you have to pay like $500 for a report. And our company buying this report because we need to understand the indication of where we can grow our business. So I'm going to be sharing with that you guys that today. Um, again, this is a uh, not, not a presentation. Uh, I don't do, really do presentation well. Uh, it's more interactions. So you have a question. You have anything that you want to challenge me on? Feel free to ask. Um, the difference between short-term rental. Well, the short-term is anything less than 30 days. Okay. Anything more than 30 days is still a long time. So if you have a rental property and you have someone that's booking your place 30 days plus, that's a long-term tenant. So you know if you have to like evict them or get, you know try to get them out of the property, you have to treat them as a long-term tenant. The, the nice thing about short-term is that you can increase your daily rate, right? Short-term, you charge them a flat rate, and then it's like that for 12 months, you're locked in with them. And if they're the state, if they're under statewide rent control, then you can only kind of increase X amount, percent, I think up to 5%, and then uh, whatever the inflation rate is. Um, with short-term, you can vet them kind of beforehand, so the Airbnb, um, they, they vet them through review, so it's like a review system. Um, the, um, the previous owner or the, the previous, previous host that they stayed at can leave some review. You can actually use that to vet them a little bit. Uh, we're using another integration that's actually look up their uh, like a soft background to see if you know they've done anything in the past and like been reported under their name. Uh, but I'll share with that in just a second some of the text that we're using. Um, the um, typically the long term rental uh, again is about performing 30% less than short term rental. Like I mentioned, long term, you lock them in for a whole, whole year like this. Short term, it's all supply to demand, right? So one of our pricing engines is pricing our daily uh, daily rate, ADR. So you can hear me saying ADR a lot going forward. Uh, ADR is an indicator letting you know how much you can charge per day. Average daily rate. And we have a technology that can analyze um, what convention going on that weekend, their concert, BTS in town, uh, uh, 49 going to the Super Bowl, anything like that, you know, the daily rate uh, kind of goes up and down based on supply and demand. Um, and, you know, there's also some disadvantage because short term, you kind of, the tenant, you have to pay for all of your utility costs, you have to pay for all the insurance versus long term, you rent it to a tenant, and they'll take care of those utility costs and, and anything inside the house during their stay, the cost effects are caused by them. Um, but here's the argument though, because um, we own a lot of long-term rentals, and not all long-term rentals are actually good performing ones, because every time, the, the disadvantage of long-term is that every time you, you rent it to a, like a bad tenant, right, and, and then you have to get them out, you know, if you have to go through eviction, now that may take 30 days to 90 days to get them out of there, there's the eviction with attorney costs, and there is loss of income during that time frame, right, and then you have to repair the property. So let's say in a good case scenario, you get a property back in 12 months, but again, you have some vacancy period, right? So imagine the average rent in Oakland right now is about 3,500, right, Kenny? 3,500 yeah. uh, average rent. So imagine you lose one month or two months, that sets you back like six, so 35 to $7,000, and you have to repair costs, right? So with long term, you have to learn how to calculate how really, how your client is performing. You sit down with a client and say, I want to buy this property and put it on the rental market. Right? And I normally look them in the eye and say, what's your end game with this? What are you looking to do? Right? Are you looking to perform 3 to 4% cap? Are you thinking, or they say, oh, because it's going to go up, the equity is going to go up another 20% in the next five years. Whatever it is, their end game is. Or they want to buy it to reserve their assets. Whatever it is, when you calculate the return, and you have to back out vacancy, property management costs, insurance, divide up by the 12 months that they actually have that tenant, how, much, how well are they performing? And we compare that to the short term. Let's say if I were to rent out to a short term tenant at the ADR X, and then you know, at the vacancy 80%, whatever it is, how well do I perform? So that's the long term and short term differences. Uh, we're going to go into that in just a second. Who here know a little bit about Airbnb, how they got started? So, so, so this slide kind of briefly shows with you. Airbnb launches to, uh, 2008 uh, in San Francisco. It started out with two founders that kind of threw an air mattress in the living room, and you know, because the cost of living in San Francisco is so high, so they're looking to make a little, you know, differences to cover their cost. So they threw a little air mattress in the living room and started renting it out on the uh, on the website. 
mobile, like Craigslist hit well, and they start gaining traction. And a lot of people are looking at it, wow, there's a lot of needs for temporary housing, right? But yes, that's the air coming in all about air, is their air mattress. And then uh, b and b bed and breakfast has been around for 100 years, okay? Uh, providing lodging has been uh, sort of like a uh, very popular thing to do throughout the state, especially in the countryside. Right? They, they do a lot of um, uh, bed and breakfast kind of thing. And then, you know, of course they go through a, a kind of startup period, they have to go out, raise funds, and uh, fast forward to today, they are evaluated at about $34 billion company. So this is getting interesting, right? So found in 2008, and now they are in 191 countries and with over 65,000 cities, right? Uh, the, this number is actually changed on a quarterly basis and annually basis. This report is actually back in the early 2018. Uh, the percentage of business travel leisure, and that's what we're going to focus in this presentation today, why it's going to make sense for us to look at short-term rental as an investment, and what all the companies, corporations are looking at when they are out there looking at corporate housing or Airbnb. The 18% business traveler. More and more co corporation business travelers are now looking at Airbnb, not just us, okay? Not just uh, personal travel leisure. Um, they look at it because there's a lot of benefit come to their uh, utilizing short-term rental, and I'll talk about that in the next few slides. But if I stack up all the listings, if I stack up all the listings right now, compared to some of the major brands, hotel brands in the United States, uh, Marriott is one of the top brands, they are stack up about 1.1 billion rooms, and Airbnb is about 3 million listings, okay? Now, Airbnb listing can categorize it differently, and we break it down into different categories, later if as far as understanding the ADR and which one's more effective. But listing can also mean one room or it could mean the whole entire home, okay? So um, Marriott, 1.1 million, that's the number of rooms. So if you really stack it up and compare by the number of rooms, Airbnb is a lot more compared to some of the major hotels. And not to mention Hilton brand and ISG. And again, this slide, I haven't, had a, an updated slide as far as hotels and, uh, and, and listed hotel and rooms stacked up in, in the United States yet, but currently right now, the uh, top number one city uh, of where you can find the most hotels and Airbnb is in New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and you see Airbnb is like right there and catching up very soon, okay? And it's only been around since, uh, what, 11 years? Why the dip in Miami? Oh, why the dip in Miami? There's a lot of restrictions in Miami. So anywhere that you find a vacational destination, a national or the north of Miami, um, there's a lot of restrictions, okay? But again, you're gonna see this number changes really soon because the city, a lot, we're gonna talk about it later too as well, when it gets into ordinance and restriction. Um, many city kind of ban Airbnb are now coming back allowing Airbnb, like San Diego, okay? <coughs> San Diego was one of the very first little cities to actually ban Airbnb, and now they're promoting, or not promoting, but they're actually relaxing the law. Uh, they, they, they have a, a short-term rental office that you have to go through, obtain a permit, and then uh, pay that TOT tax, because that TOT tax is huge. Imagine, you know, now you're able to collect 12% of every single listing in your city. That's a lot of dollar coming back to your city revenue. Did they reverse that because they couldn't ban it effectively? Correct. And not many cities, including Oakland, uh, are fully effective at banning it. They don't really, because right now, Oakland, uh, if I search it up on Airbnb right now, there's still over 2,000 listings. And not all of them are in that uh, 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 restricted, you know, that, that allowable area. Because Oakland only allows you to do Airbnb in the commercial zoning, not the residential. But I can go to Airbnb right now and show you over two listings that is actually in the wrong zoning, because they're not really enforcing it. I went down to the city planning at Hayward. Hayward banned it. But I went to Hayward and I said, look, you have 500 listings in this location. If they can do it, why can't I do it? I'm not throwing one in the bus, but I'm like, hey, how come you are not regulating it? And they simply say, you know, if no one's complaining, we're not going to do anything about it. Right? Because if you want to regulate it, there's cost. But if you're not collecting income, you can't really have the, the budget to do so. Well, yep, it's everywhere right now. So the crazy part here is that, guys, um, we started this company about 
less than a little over a year ago, and how we're snowballed to where we are today, producing close to a million dollars revenue, is because of this business is it's growing so fast, right? And I'll give you one example. Reminded to follow my vision. Um, so, the do you remember when Uber first started, right? And then you know the feeling, the weird feeling that you just kind of book and then jump with someone back in the car and you kind of look in the dash to see if they got a license or you know you want to have some ID of you know who you in the back uh, uh, seat with. You know what I mean? So now we don't do that anymore. But when was the last time you guys actually booked an Uber and compared with a taxi fare? You don't. Why is convenient, right? And I actually did. And some some of my Uber fare is more expensive than taxi, believe it or not. But I still did it anyway. It's so convenient. I don't want to wait in line for a yellow cab to show up. I just book and let, let me know when to walk to the station. That's it, right? So again, that's right there. The consumer uh, uh, spending, the consumer usage nowadays are moving towards mobile app. But that's what Airbnb is focusing on, and I think they're very successful at doing that. Um, is Airbnb really cheaper than hotel? And it is. It is in many ways. Okay. And we'll talk about the experiences differently. But if you're in New York, um, I, I just took my family trip to Europe, which I am canceling. Um, and I was looking at uh, Barcelona. I was looking at everywhere in Italy. And you're getting so much bang for your buck with Airbnb. Like you literally have access to a pool, you're walking distance with some of the main attraction, and you're paying like 30, 40% less than uh, the hotel. It's crazy, right? So that is, and then the hotels right now are actually getting into the Airbnb space as well. So you, you get, you see some of these hotel um, uh, uh, businesses are launching some of these boutique hotels, kind of experience, uh, consumer experience type of uh, uh, stay. So right now, for the past, I would say three years, Airbnb set their focus on corporate traveler. And it makes so much sense right now. Because look around you, look around you right now. People are now looking at Airbnb for corporate traveler. Um, number one sector is uh, in high time. And in uh, healthcare. We get a lot of healthcare customers. Uh, uh, yes, um, if they are travelers, right? It makes so much more sense for a hospital to hire a nurse from <coughs> Ohio, pay them the Ohio salary, give them a stipend for their stay, and then you know get them in the rotation of, of nurses. Where if they hire a nurse here, they have to pay the Bay Area salary, and most Bay Area salary nurse can afford my housing here. So of course, yeah. So now, now because nursing and healthcare is growing industry for the past ten years. Now there's more available for uh, that they have to hire someone and put them in a rotation for three to six months, give them a stipend, and guess where those travel nurses like to stay? They like to stay at the Airbnb. Why? Because it, you know, number one, it's affordable. Number two, it, it's home, right? If you, if you have to like work a 12-hour shift and go back to a 12 by 15 with no kitchen net, you gotta go out to a laundry mat, you gotta use public Wi-Fi, or you gotta pay more for higher speed Wi-Fi. Sometimes you have to pay for parking depends on where you're at. Right? With Airbnb, all that included. All inclusive, right? You want to cook, we have a full kitchen. So, corporations are looking at that. We have a lot of PG&E uh, as our guests. We have a lot of um, a big company like eBay or even Apple, Google. When they, um, Apple and Google actually book the most high-tech groups and they bring them, they, they, on a monthly basis, I, have, I think they have over like 30,000 worldwide uh, booking for their uh, clients. So let's say, for example, we actually host one of the Japanese groups that works for Google, and they, they entered this project they were working on. So these group of people stayed at our Airbnb with like nine or 10 people uh, stayed at one house, right? Number one, it's fun to stay with all your colleagues in somewhere that they can cook and they can actually have a think tank brainstorm of what they're working on. And they've been working all day anyway, so they just come on the street, right? So now that's the reason why our housing is the solution for a lot of companies, even the big companies like Google or Facebook. Any question there? So if you kind of put that in perspective, then you can see why this business is growing, right? Um, so here's gonna talk about the uh, corporation travel of growth in the last 
um, five years, we started in 2015, when, and when it first really started about 14%, but 2018, uh, 2019, the number is really about 37% right now. So more and more companies are looking at uh, Airbnb short-term rental uh, to book for their corporate travel leisure. And here's some of the major dis uh, distributors. Uh, VRBO, Home Away, the same company, okay? Uh, Home Away bought VRBO, and, uh, and, and of course Airbnb. 70% of our business right now is coming from Airbnb. Why? Because it's a platform. They create such a user-friendly platform for the company or any end user to book. And, uh, and also coming back into the, the guest experience, right? They like to read. That's why Airbnb coming out with Airbnb experience now. You can book a, a, a location, and then you can book a tour guide. You can book a uh, private photographer. You can even book a private chef who can come to your cat and cook for you. And that's why actually we did that. We, we kind of had a whole trip to Italy and we booked a photographer and we booked chef. They can come to your home and cook for you. And it's a really cool experience that you get to um, experience all that through Airbnb. Now, raise your hand if you are a real estate professional working with investors. Okay, most, most of you are. But this is important that you understand, right? Um, the, the ROI. So by providing a better ROI, better net operating income for your rate of return can actually increase your sales, right? Um, I have more and more investors now are looking at property, calling us up and say, hey, I wanna buy a property that I can use for Airbnb. And when we do the income calculation for them, it make a lot more sense buying rental now versus before, you know, you can you can rent out the whole house for a three bedroom, two bath sound and you can get roughly about thirty five hundred dollars. Where with Airbnb you can get thirty percent more or forty percent more. Okay? And, and I, I I mentioned already that sometimes long term you gotta deal with that long term tenant issue. Right? Long term tenant tends to defer your your maintenance. Something goes down, if they can fix it, they fix it. If not, they'll just let it be. It's not their home. Right? If they're staying on the ceiling, they're like, okay, if it's not dripping, I don't care. Right? And they'll call you up, by the time they call you up, it's a ten thousand dollar pest issue. Right? But that's the firm maintenance that I have to deal with all the time with our long term portfolio. So uh, and it's eating up your, your cost over the year. Um, and then once you understand this short term rental and income calculation and uh, the benefit of where which city you're living in and everything like that, you build your confidence and talk to your tenant, that's your investor. You know what I mean? So um, something that we're working on right now, and by the way, the bottom, all these slides are actually from All the Room. You guys look them up. All the Room is a data analytic company that we work with. Um, they are they actually on the show called Stay Here uh, on Netflix. You can check them out. Uh, the CEO is actually a really good friend of ours. He was just staying at our, one of our Airbnb last week. And um, he came in and we'll talk about some of the uh, uh, the data he's providing. So All the Room is a data analytic company that provides raw data to companies like Hotel.com or uh, HomeAwayBooking.com. They study all these data, all these uh, ADR, all these vacancy. Uh, it's a macro level, so they actually pull the data worldwide. And to, to have a really understanding of the consumer behavior, right? Are they choosing Airbnb more than, than hotel? Why? What's the difference? Where's the location differences? All that stuff. So uh, we're working with uh, Joseph and all the room to create more of a agent kind of metric that allow you guys to come in and type in, I have a house, this location, how many bedrooms, so and so, I'm close to, my walkable score is 94%, for example, I'm down the street from Starbucks, how much can I get through short-term rental? Okay, what's my ADR is gonna be? So that's something that we're working on right now, so hopefully it's gonna be available really soon tonight. So, again, I mentioned already, short-term rental is anything less than 30 days. Um, and short-term rental, to be honest though, nowadays short-term rental is more like a fully furnished type of uh, rental, right? So long term, you give up another shop. They got the space, they bring in their own furniture. So long term, short term rental, you provide everything. Okay? So uh, so that's something for you to understand about too, is that short term rental, there's a there's a big startup cost, initial cost. Uh, for average of three bedroom, two bath to furnish the entire home the way that we usually furnish our home, we provide everything. Okay? Every spoon, every fork, coffee maker, I don't know, you name it. Everything that you need in the house, uh, we provide it. Everything's new, stylish. Uh, three bedroom, two bath will easily cost you roughly about $15,000. Okay? 
Not too bad. And it, it is tax deductible, okay? It's, it's not a business, it will light up and it depreciate over time as well. And of course the cost of permit and you know the most city you gotta get obtain permit and stuff like that. Short term rental in apartment and condo depends. You, know, you gotta look at the HOA. Because sometimes even though you're in the city that is not regulated, um, you still have to look at the HOA and uh, the CCNR to see if there are any restrictions towards anything less than 30 days. Okay, we have uh, we have condo and apartment complexes where the HOA is okay with it, but they just you know, they want to give you a lot of trouble. They're like, okay, you got to submit a daily log, like who's coming in and out of this compound, right? So they want all that. So we talk about why it's getting popular. I mean, if you own a business, so two weeks ago. I, uh, I talked to one of the uh, business owners. She owns five restaurants. Uh, most of her restaurants are in like Palo Alto, Mountain View, Sunnydale, expensive area. And one of her main issues was she can't hire people. The waiter, waitress, I mean, I don't know if you guys understand South Bay, but if you're leaving home around three o'clock, you go to work around three o'clock, and that's where restaurant business really, that's when they start going to work, right? You be in traffic for an hour plus. Right? So you, you have to really leave early in the morning or you know, leave late at night, otherwise you'll be sitting an hour for uh, sitting in traffic for an hour plus it's only 20 miles away. Um, so it's getting worse, it's getting bad, right? So her problem is, you know, she can't hire people and keep people because you know they, they make the salary of the, 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 the wages of a waiter and the waitress. They it's not enough for them to rent a place there in the city, right? So she looked at our properties and say, what are some of your properties that I can rent, fully furnished the entire home? And I actually can include free housing, like one room fully furnished to her employees, right? So it, it does provide us an immediate solution for her. For us, we take the property, we fully furnish it, and we give it to her, and whatever she wanted to do, she book them, or she can book to us directly, and uh, she provides that solution. So she can pay them, let's say, X amount of salary, plus free housing. Right? So that's going to be a going forward solution to a lot of companies. And we talk about just a restaurant owner that owns five restaurants, but there's more and more companies out there that are looking to provide quality housing uh, for their employees as well. Okay? And then, of course, you know, people love staying at corporate housing or Airbnb because they have access to all the amenities that I mentioned about. Right? So we have everything from a blender all the way to a pasta maker or um, anything. Right? And um, we have cleaner. You know. One of the things that our company is really proud of is, uh, is our cleaners. Um, our, our cleaners team have a protocol on cleaning the property. A lot of everything we fell uh, because, number one, 80% uh, of people visiting the home and everything we found to listen themselves. They match it themselves. That's how easy it is. That's how easy it was to start an Airbnb business. We're going to go into the data and just real quick, but a lot of those self posts, they're lacking on professionalism and they're cleaners, sometimes they clean themselves, or they hire their friends and their family, the uncle, the aunt, whatever it is, that's clean for them. So they don't have the industry standard on cleaning. So they start losing clientele over the time, okay? So we experience that. If you talk to someone and they say, well, Airbnb not doing so bad, and they say, are you managing professionally? And that's really the big difference here, okay? Uh, the cool thing about corporate housing, Airbnb, is that someone company can use us. They can book it month by month, so you know they don't have to lock in any contract for like a year. Uh, they can do anything they want from a week all the way to a year, wherever they want. Um, we, we work with them; it's all inclusive. And here's some of the company or sectors, business sectors that are looking at our temporary housing right now. And, and these are the people: um, temporary job assignment, right? pg e when they work on like a power outage or something like that in the neighborhood, they come into a neighborhood and they stay, the whole crew stays in the home, in the whole house. Uh, so so pg e is one of our bigger clients. Uh, we have Amazon worker, they come in for an internship or they come in for a certain project, they stay at our property. Uh, nursing, we're big, 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 big on nursing, uh, healthcare. Um, they, they love our property and uh, that's why we, most of our property are situated near hospital uh, because we know and then families that are patients, right? Uh, so they have stay on our property as well. Uh, you know, we have families staying on our property because they are claiming the insurance and the adjuster call us and say they need temporary housing because this property has to go through renovation. And the renovation nowadays can take longer and longer every day. So they stay on our property as well. Um, 
You know, people buy a new home and they need to get out of their apartment, right? Because some apartment they have auto renewer, which is stupid shit, right? That they actually, you know, if you don't renew by X amount of time, you automatically renew the 12 month contract. But they look at temporary housing as well, and that's what we provide to them. Relocation, event planners, okay? People have weddings and their family coming in town, they much prefer booking a whole house than booking one room. So we have a lot of weddings, guys. We have uh, people staying on three month property, Saturday property, and they are coming in town for a wedding. And they book in the Airbnb, they're looking for a stylish home, they're looking for uh, houses that are near their, their venue. Um, uh, so by, by being close to a major hotel, um, uh, Freeway, Hospital, all those are uh, kind of key components of uh, growing our business as well. Because now we're catering to the, the, the main sector, the people that need it. Um, and here's kind of break it down by the, uh, the, the sector, right? Uh, for corporate housing, uh, relocation, I mentioned that's one of the big ones. Insurance is one of them. Government military, uh, we have government uh, military on assignment. Uh, they stay on the properties too. And if you break it down to, um, by the segment, the industry segment, healthcare is like number one, okay? Uh, and then technology, sorry, technology is number one. Uh, and then healthcare, and really that's the two major sectors that we're actually catering our properties or products to right now. Any question there? When, when the insurance adjuster, corporation, anybody that's looking at a property, they're always looking for like, they're asking what kind of amenities we have, square footage of our home. The number of beds count is the key, right? With a room at hotel, um, you can get a very nice suite, and the most you can get there maybe two beds and a, a, a rollaway, right? Um, with a, an Airbnb, you're paying almost the same price, but sometimes less. And you get, let's say, a three bedroom, two bath, six people can stay there. If they're couple, they're not couple, they don't mind sharing beds, and six people. Or in the living room, usually, if big enough, we, we put in like a, uh, a, a sofa bed. Okay, something that they can easily convert it and then sleep one or sleep two there. Um, so we we always bank on the number of beds that we can add into the property, and we, we provide everything: washer, dryer, uh, you know, TV. Well, smart TV. Our TV is a lot more upgraded than most hotels that we travel to. They're paying more 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 price than that. And we have Chromecast, we have Netflix, we have uh, Hulu, right? So pretty much we provide everything. Okay, you don't get that at a, at a hotel. COVID housing right now, uh, the uh, as far as the statewide, um, the, the fastest growing state right now is the uh, in DC or District of Columbia, um, Colorado, New York, Oregon, and then uh, California surprisingly on number eleven for COVID housing travel. Okay. Now. I pull these data from all the room uh, analytics because we just did a presentation together with them last week and they, uh, their team actually spent a lot of time studying our market area and uh, break it down in a kind of macro level for us to understand. And again, their data that they're pulling in from is all over the world, right? All the hotels, all the Airbnbs, the perform of everything. So I'm gonna share with you some of the data that they did this report for us uh, and it's fresh data, it's only about uh, a week old, okay? Um, so global revenue right now for short-term rental worldwide is about $75 billion, okay? Uh, U.S. market holds about 25% of that, $15 billion, right? So that's a good number. That's a really good number, and knowing that it's a growing business still, it's a very young business, uh, you know, local city don't know how to deal with us quite yet, but that's how new it is. Um, the, the year growth is about 20%. Uh, we have about 7.5 million properties globally, and US, again, is about 2 million, okay? 10K yearly revenue, I don't, I don't care too much about that because really you can't really distinguish whether that's the income for a room or a whole house, okay? California. California right now generating about 3 billion in revenue in short-term rental annually, and uh, 2.6 is entire home and 16 million night book. Night book is the uh, revenue, that's, that's the ref on revenue per available listing that we can generate. And um, to break it down, 
the average ADR going forward is about $185 a night. Okay? And again, this is just general information because really it all depends on the room and the layout and location and luxury. Um, so this is the area of the open fields that we're going to be looking at um, overall, the entire Bay Area, going from uh, Richmond all the way to Las Cabo. Bay Area short-term rental. Um, currently, Bay Area revenue is about 554 million, so you know, half a billion there. Uh, the uh, occupancy rate by the entire uh, Bay Area is about 47 percent. Okay, so this is the Bay Area occupancy rate standard. You're going to see our performer in just a second, and, and I'm going to share with you secrets how we're going to beat that average standard. Um, so average about 39, 33 million uh, books and over 22,000 properties. Okay, the ADR again is 187. And here we go. Bay Area. As far as performer for ADR, average daily rate, San Francisco holding number one. Okay, San Francisco number two in the Airbnb list, uh, short term rental. And in San Francisco right now, the um, they do have an SDR office. Uh, they do have a budget and uh, depends on your zoning as well so and your license right so one of the projects that we worked on recently is uh, the investor purchased a student housing on post street got it for eight million dollars and there's about 86 rooms the uh, student housing had a grandfather in hotel license but it was outdated so we we came in and we looked at everything and we actually recommended him to reinstate his hotel license. So he went down with his attorney, reinstated the license, and got out of food. And they allow us to, because of student housing, in different type of rooms, there's rooms with student housing uh, is like dormitory. So sometimes you have like two bunk beds, four beds total in one room, and he has cottages. So we went in and we actually, uh, what we did call is, uh, Pit bump. We repair slowly for the for, for, for floor. So we suggested it to convert some of the rooms into more that cater towards business travel leisure. Right? Again, go from student housing to business travel leisure. So what do they need? They need everything: a, a bathroom inside, a full kitchenette, uh, you know, self check-in. Right? They don't have to deal with local <coughs> parking or anything like that. So we went through all that and. Um, with the uh, license in San Francisco, they allow to do X amount of days, uh, you know, less than seven days, X amount of days, like you have to do a week or more. Uh, so we follow that guideline. And we, again, we deal with San Francisco that like, they really didn't know how to regulate us. So we kind of have to navigate to, through their, their gatekeepers and different people sometimes tell us different things. We just do everything, document everything, right? Um, so we went in and start launching a property with well, one listing at a time. And from eight million, in less than a year, he, he was able to get an appraisal, and it went up to about 14 million dollars a year. And just changing that concept, the business concept, and have that boost in NOI, right? And we built to project that. So that, that's a pretty cool project that we worked on with him. And um, San Jose right now is our territory. It's about 2,500 listings, and um, the average, Occupancy rate is about 50%. The ADR is about $120 a night. Oakland, Oakland currently have 2,100 listings in a restricted span. <laughs> yes. yes, we are. We are. Um, we're, we're growing with them right now. So that's one of our pilot programs with them. So my original idea was trying to convert that into a self check in hotel. Right? And we had some setbacks with the city regulations, so now we're, we're, we're changing some of the apartments to make sure it fits with the city uh, requirements. Yeah. And it's funny because we, we got fined from them recently. So people worry about being fined. We got fined. And it's not that much, like $2,500. It was, you know, it was smack in the wrist. Uh, and it was, some of it was their fault too. Because they, they tell us one thing from one guy, and another guy saying, oh, wait a minute, per this guideline, so some guys slap a book at us and say, you didn't follow a book, I don't care if you me. We're like, oh, okay, but we have an email from, you know, so-and-so, and at the end of the day, we, 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 we compromise. 
and we paid them something and we moved on and we changed the listing again. So it happened. So yes, but don't be afraid. You want to try to, you know, your Airbnb trial, short term rental, don't be afraid. Talk, learn it, but again, you know, work with the city a little bit. The city's still working, try, trying to figure things out right now. Um, so Oakland, um, I looked at it, more than 10% of listings on the Airbnb right now from Oakland is actually uh, uh, breaking the law, right? They're not following the guidelines, but again, so much enforcement that's what that's up right now. And then um, Berkeley, again, Berkeley also banned Airbnb, and there is uh, 569 listings, and it's performing quite well, six, six high occupancy rate in Berkeley right now. I'm not suggesting you go there and do that, but uh, if you if you find a property that fits in the short-term rental and can perform as a short-term rental, uh, then I suggest you do some more research on there, talk to the city and find out how, how you can do it as they do. So right now, in, um, I'm gonna look at San Jose a little bit more, because right now we're currently uh, the neighborhoods are terrible. Currently, we're comparing about 30 listings, and their ADR roughly, the rep par, which is revenue per listing they can, they can generate, is about $170 a month. So, I'm going to show you this slide all performer. So, they did this for us. We didn't even ask them. They did it for us. And the San Jose ADR is about $120 average, 50% occupancy. Currently, we are performing. And these are all listing in this area, and we're performing above the uh, uh, industry standard of the, the whole um, county. So how do we do that? So these are actually some of the pictures of our houses. So a lot of our homes are kind of upgrade smartest. Uh, we have a lot of clients that are real estate flipper that they bought it too high, they spent a lot of money in the property, they couldn't sell it. Okay? We had an investor, she bought a, uh, a property in non U and she added an ADU in the back. So she had two units now, three bedroom, two bath in the front, two bedroom, two bath in the back. Uh, she had it on the market for 1.2 plus and she couldn't sell it at that time. I'm like, why didn't I buy it from her, right? So we we took out the listing and we performed it as Airbnb. This is way before um, now the new kind of restriction. So from going like with an average rental market, she could make maybe six thousand, seven thousand dollars a month for both units. Um, so we took it on and, and turned it to an Airbnb. And within the first two months, we we're performing average about twelve thousand dollars a month. That's a big difference. And now she don't want to sell it anymore, she wants to buy some more. Uh, so she's trying to refinance that. But the problem here is a lot of banks, again, this is brand new, the banks, they, they couldn't really rely on the short-term rental income, right? They want like a, a, a lease agreement from a long-term and a, a, a cancel check from, you know, a long-term tenant. So they're not really used to underwriting short-term rental income yet. And that's changing, okay? And, uh, you know, property in three months, uh, again, you look at the way that we set up, you know, some properties we even have a whole gym, okay? We utilize every space list, so if it's a space that is a common area, right? And we know that business travel leisure, a, a nice living room don't mean anything to them, right? But you put some gym equipment in there, then that's amenities that I actually willing to pay for, right? Now, and then big rooms, we put two beds in there, okay? The way that we lay out our beds, again, is, is pretty much like a hotel, okay? Um, in most hotels, they still use the, the high-end comforter. When we first started out, we used high-end comforter, and immediately we learned that guests don't like that. Um, you know, I, I, I never knew anything about duvet until I started this business, because now we have guests that have actually recommended that we should use duvet. They want us to cover the comforter, okay? So they know, they, they know that we will always wash that duvet, right? I mean, how often does the hotel shove that big comforter in a washer and dryer machine? That's why I don't use comforter when I go to the hotel. Uh, if you stay in there anything less than four stars, I'm pretty sure they don't wash that comforter often, right? Uh, because it's big. And, and the turnover is so slow, right? And those comforters, you put in the washer and dryer so much, it's gonna damage, right? 
So we learned that we use thinner comforter, but we cover with duvet cover, and with the duvet cover, it's cheaper. Amazon, 15 bucks, right? And we wash them all every single time. And we, we bleach it, we keep it white, clean, stain free, and the guests enjoy that and they appreciate it a lot. They know that we actually provide a clean uh, uh, place for them. Uh, cost deferred maintenance and high repair costs. 
us are cleaner come into the property day in and day out. Every check-in and check-out of cleaners are there. They look at the property and report back to us and immediately there's a scratch on the wall, you know, uh, a towel hanger is missing, broken, whatever like that. We fix those things immediately. And how does that turn, how does that affect your bottom line? You don't have big tickets till the end of the year. And everything is fixed immediately, right? So that, that's a big benefit of you know working with a short-term rental. And these are all the booking channels that we're working with right now, that I mentioned already. And on top of that, we also advertise on Google and Pay App and Facebook app. Technology. Uh, currently, we're using a uh, sort of like a PMS system. Uh, if we go away from the system, we're actually upgrading our technology very soon. But the system called Smart BNB, um, you guys can check them out. We do uh, pretty much 50% of our automation through Smart BNB. Uh, price Lab is a third party pricing, uh, pricing integration that we use. There's five other companies out there. We like Price Lab, we like House Wheels. Price Lab is like Hotel Tonight. Anyone use Hotel Tonight? So the technology of Hotel Tonight is that, you know, if they don't book, if they don't sell those rooms by X amount, by a certain hour of the day, that price drop, right? That's why, that's why you book Hotel Tonight at five o'clock or something like that. Um, and you get a, a huge discount, right? And if you sell, they sell out. So for us, we believe, and that's how we increase our occupancy. If you are an average host, you host it on Airbnb, and you relied on our technology, their technology is called smart pricing. They set a certain price based on supply and demand and competition in the area, and they try to book you as, as much as they can. Airbnb collects 15%, 12% from the guests, 3% from you. So they don't, don't, don't get money booking regardless to make it up, right? Um, so um, Price Lab, the way it does it, it projects it to the pricing like two weeks, three weeks in advance, and it, it knows all the the supplies that demand the pricing, the hotel convention, anything in town, it actually priced it strategically. Um, we, uh, we use noise aware. Uh, some of the properties that we, we personally don't like party houses, we, we're shying away from that. So we don't really focus on destinational properties. So we have a, a few properties that are more destinational. People tend to have a party there. Any guests that more than six, you know, they start showing up and start having a party and we have to deal with it and local enforcement coming in. You know, you just have trouble, right? Unnecessary. So, noise aware is a device that we actually disclose in our property that if the noise level reaches a certain level, the our system kicked in. We set up a massive kind of saying that when you keep the noise, noise level at a certain level, anything like that. Um, yellow lock. Uh, the locking system, our locking system is pretty much uh, automated, right? If they book it, we send them the code, and that code should expire or allow us to change the code remotely. Anytime they check in and check out, so that way it's secure. We also use uh, incorporate our properties with uh, Nest camera. That's where we ID uh, the entrance of each property, not inside the house. We absolutely have no camera inside the property. Um, we, yeah, so we have that in the uh, pretty much cover the, the front end, the back end of the house for for certain purpose, safety and also uh, regulate parties, right? So um, we have houses with pool and stuff like that. And we don't want people to say, oh, I'll book five and then 20 people showed up and put the case or anything like that, right? So we, we use that air DNA is a pricing system we use other than all the room. You guys all can use air DNA that have a free functionality allow you to kind of search and give you an average ADR. By the way, full disclosure, air DNA is off. Air DNA is like zero decimal, right? So um, if you wanted to understand a little bit about your location and how well you can perform, my suggestion is go on Airbnb, do a pin drop on the map, and see what listings are available out there, what kind of amenities they have to offer, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, and do that comparison to see if your listing is going to be better than that, and do your ADR calculation there. You can actually click on booking and choose certain days and go through your booking without a checkout and see how much your average daily rate is going to be, right? Uh, so that's how you do a comparison. I uh, talked about price dynamic already. Um, any questions? Are there any make or break uh, features that can uh, really lower the ADR, like no parking? Yeah, absolutely. Um, parking, uh, the temporary location, if you're nearby park station or you know public transportation and you have no parking, that might be okay. 
you know, we have property at, um, uh, near some of the uh, downtown area that have very little parking, but usually when you have guests that are coming in town um, for business, sometimes they don't have a car, they just take Uber everywhere, okay? So I have guests that, you know, take Uber every day, and the company pay for it. Uh, I know Google pay for it, uh, so uh, the answer is you can. It's really hard, it's not, it's not make or break zones. It's all location, yeah. Is this helping you guys a little bit understanding better? Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah, okay. So um, I have, uh, you guys have to print out and keep that? Yeah. Uh, question. Is there any way you can get out of the house without uh, having any intention You can't if you live on the premises. Yeah, without any intention of You have to live on the premises. So, yeah, you just, like I say, one of the ways to do that is called house hacking, right? So you actually can put in someone you know. Let's say I go to your cabin and I say, hey Kevin, how much are you paying for your apartment? My bedroom, one thousand in San Francisco. And you're like, oh, I think 3,500. Like, what if I put you in a $2 million property, give you a master suite for half of that price? And Kevin's like, yeah, I'll do it. Sure. And you get access to the whole house, right? But you have to be my co-host on my Airbnb. It's a win-win situation. So now you have a host on premises, right? And now you can do Airbnb in San Francisco. That's why San Francisco is number two on the whole nation list. Still growing. So yes, we definitely house hack. We have a lot of you that request us to do some house hacking out there though. Uh, we are expanding out there. However, uh, our company right now looking at uh, states and city that are much more relaxed and affordable. So we can come in and actually own the access rather than renting it. So there's two ways you can grow your business. One of them is to hearing a lot. And by the way, a lot of guys are selling classes on Facebook and stuff, Instagram, you guys follow those guys, a lot of them are fake. Because they're, they're, they're saying that, oh, you can arbitrage this and make $1,000 without owning shit. But I'm like, dude, it's $15,000 to start a property. And plus, you have to pay for the first month grant and a security deposit. If you don't make it, you're losing those money, right? So that's why when I do my classes, I'm, I teach you guys how to find the data really understand it. Like really dig down, like, okay, I got a property, I want a house hack, I want to put my house on Airbnb, but is it gonna make it? You know what I mean? Um, because you know, next thing you know, you'll be burning yourself. Like just try to put everything in Craigslist, right? So be careful of what you're looking for too. Uh, but yes, in San Francisco, if you have a property that, you know, you can talk to your team member, someone that's saying, you know, they live in the property, you know, that's another way too. Then you can do window work rental. So you go to the city and find out what the regulations are? You can search it on the web too. Yeah. yeah. So San Francisco right now, uh, only thing you need to do is you need to obtain a license, a short-term rental license, so you can pay your TOT tax. Airbnb, if the booking coming from Airbnb, Airbnb will charge that from the gross and take that away from you so you don't see it, and then pay it directly to the city. It's submitted directly to the city, okay? Um, so you gotta obtain a license, you gotta have proper insurance, and you know, you have to be on the property. So you can find a co-home and will live there if you wanted to invest that way. Any other questions?
anything that triggers the red flags that you can mark, right? The front camera, the uh, noise aware that you can install. There's another device called Sam that you can install too. It's a cold detect marijuana. Okay? And it'll send us a report saying that oh someone is you know, having a good time. Then you start your coffee. We have no smoking policy, we have no party policy. Um, but if that happens, then we usually if we find out after, we find out they do a party, it's just a light one, it's okay, we let it go. But anything bigger that they damage your property, we'll report it to the Airbnb and get our money back. Yeah. Is there anywhere where you can Airbnb and not have to have a host on site? Yeah. There's a lot of cities right now that still have no ordinance yet. So, um, let's see if I can pull something else. Would it be cool if I sent you guys a spreadsheet? I think you guys are going to love the spreadsheet. Um, yes. It's going to be uh, $5.99 each. So, I have an Excel spreadsheet that I actually pull all the studies of sleeping regulation from 2,000 cities in the United States. So, you can actually do a search. Um, Let's say some of the areas that we're looking at right now, let's say uh, Dallas, all right? And you see Dallas right now is not, it's prohibited, right? And let's say I type in Oakland. So Oakland right now is, must be in a COVID zoning, right? So I can show you this, this is actually uh, done by a, a company that they, they pull all the restrictions, the local ordinance, they update it regularly, and they send it to us with a subscription. And uh, we pay for the subscription. It just save us on the, go on the web and study. And a lot of cities like uh, Vegas, and um, you know, sometimes they have a local ordinance, but they don't put it on their website yet. So you have to, you, have to, you know, they don't really enforce it yet. Right now we're, we're all over Bay Area um, and San Francisco. We also have in LA. And we're trying to go into some of the uh, more relaxed city right now. It's affordable as well. So we're looking at Phoenix, we're looking at Houston. Um, so um, that's some of the cities that we're looking to go on this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we do. So uh, if you're interested, to kind of invest with us. We, we go out and we acquire properties and we create uh, partnerships, uh, you know, joint venture, and you can come on as our, one of our partners. Yeah. So we buy fixed, fixed properties. Um, we're looking at multi hotels, we're looking at uh, apartment complexes, uh, any relaxed area that allow us to come in and provide furnished housing. But we, we grow, we want to we focus on area that we know is going to perform well. That's why we focus on the ADR a lot. And we want to look at the competition to see. Uh, we just launched a property in Fresno, okay? Like, out of the hole, right? We go to Fresno, and we looked it up, and like, some of the Fresno have been doing so well. And they're like two star, three star type of bookings, right? And, we're, and we come in there performing, providing like a four star or five star space, and we see that immediately we spawn. We have like five, six bookings in like a day. Um, so we just put a team out there, and we're growing out to Fresno. And the, uh, the startup price, the acquisition price for Fresno is very low. You can buy um, a five bedroom house for like 360000 So there's some investment opportunities out there. So. Any, the cool thing about this is that now you understand this concept, you, it, it will allow you to invest in real estate and have a, a, kind of a higher income that you can use for your calculations. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, again, I'll, I'll open up my Instagram. Yeah, or if everyone just open up Instagram and follow us, and you can also. Um, How are you? <laughs>